Right. So now we are coming to the real, uh, I won't say difficult ones, but to the core. Morning was like, a, you know, um, entry. <clears throat> Making the connections was good, adjusting, prioritizing and all that. And um, date time, we said we fix the date time and nurture one another. That was the first session. In the second session, we looked at uh, communication, speaking, talking, and uh, we looked at uh, listening skills, reflective listening in particular. So now we're going to the next session, which is revolving, uh, sorry, resolving conflicts. <laughs> <laughs> revolving conflicts. You had a good lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. So this is a picture. Um, you know, many years ago, we were living in um, the Gulf. We were living in Abu Dhabi. And uh, I got a call from a friend. Uh, and uh, this friend uh, asked me to come to Sharjah. And the reason was that, uh, you know, uh, it was more than a week since he and his uh, wife spoke. They had a baby baby at home and, uh, you know, saying he said it, it was becoming physical, you know. And uh, he said, look, uh, you're probably the only one, only, only person who could uh, speak to my wife. So I went there and, uh, you know, he, was, he had his car parked outside and he said, uh, can you go inside? Can you talk to her? And it was a few, three, two, three hours of, you know, listening to her. And, uh, you know, this is what the Bible says, Proverbs 18, 19. It's like a, a brother offended. A brother offended. Can somebody read that? Uh, 18, 19. Proverbs 18, 19. Thank you, Jesus. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a citadel. Uh, I, I deliberately uh, uh, put this picture in the next one. Now, you know, after seeing this and after, you know, that situation, um, it was a situation of, you know, a difficult return, you know. It, it, it didn't happen overnight. It happened over a series of uh, things. But uh, there was one la last straw that broke the camel's back. And uh, two or three hours, and you know, after that, the husband was able to come inside and, uh, you know, um, initiate a conversation. And it took weeks before they could uh, be restored. But conflict is like that. Conflict, you know, um, uh, we have to be, within marriage, we have to be so careful, so careful uh, not to offend the person, offend the spouse, offend the spouse. So this afternoon, we're going to look at... Uh, Resolving conflicts and resolving conflicts. Oh, one more picture. Yes. You see that? <laughs> That's like a dam, you know. Um, starting a quarrel is like opening a dam. <laughs> the beginning of strife is like letting out water. So what does it say? Bible advice is abandon the quarrel before it breaks out. So that's what we're going to see. We're going to look at four uh, four things that will help us actually um, create an atmosphere. I won't say that these are the uh, these are the uh, you know um, uh, steps. These are principles. Yeah, thank you. Principles that we need to uh, follow to keep this dam from breaking up. Right. So uh, <clears throat> that's what we're going to see. But before that, why why is it that uh, marriages have conflict? Why is it that marriages have conflict? We're different. You hit the nail on the head, one head. <laughs> yeah, you are different. That's number one. You know, number one, we are different. We are different. Uh, we have different backgrounds. Uh, I know a friend who is from Bangalore who went and married a girl from Brazil. And uh, that was okay when he was out there or offshore. But when he came, when they came back, he found it difficult to accept her wearing shorts, so short and walking around the whole day. So, you know, differences, differences in priorities. One wants to uh, go have leisure and pleasure. The other wants to have ministry during the weekends. It's a big difference, right? Different interests. 
concerts and musicals and you know me football and <laughs> different opinions you know my mom and dad i remember as a little boy we had three drumstick trees in our house and uh, dad wanted it to be you know nice and green you know greener the pro the better more prosperous but uh, mom believed that you had to you know keep cutting it so that you had nice you know good greens so same drumstick tree but different opinions about the same thing different personalities i was an introvert she is an extrovert uh, <laughs> i'm very logical she's intuitive i'm mechanical she is very creative you know so this is these are all differences different I mean, he wakes up in the morning the previous night he plans his day you know the next day so he 1 2 3 4 5 for me i wake up every morning and say this is the day that the lord has made <laughs> okay god what do you have in store for today i'm mean, not that i'm not organized but this that's more my nature i love just seeing every day as an adventure and let's see what's going to happen today kind of a thing so yeah so that's us you know so different but uh, you know the real thing that causes conflict is our selfishness you know we are all human that nature adam nature in us to be selfish you know my way i want my way and uh, our culture the man has to have his way that is before now i think it has changed right yeah, both want to have a way <laughs> it's going one way my right? interest my rights my checkbook you know my opinions so this is that self that you know constantly rises up within us that uh, causes conflict see it's, it doesn't mean that you know we don't have conflict i remember one person telling his wife in front of us saying you know what uh, everybody has conflicts every marriage has conflicts just learn to live with it and i had to put my head in and say no 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 that's not the way you deal with it you just you know just ignore it long enough it will go away it does not so uh, when we say you know it does and also we need to remember it does not mean we married the wrong person Uh, we've come time and time again even even before we came into marriage ministries per se we've seen people say you know what sister brother i married the wrong person and all their lives they sang that song and went away young okay for me 50 is young so you know they just sang that one song and they'll go in two different directions like you know you know train tracks they don't ever meet parallel lives same house parallel lives so conflict is it's there how do we deal with it how do we handle it the first thing you know first suggestion uh, do we do i you know I, i remember the thing is do i have to always change you know the bible says love and submit and then the the bible says uh, husbands love your wives it says women you know wives submit to your husbands and the constant thing thing is how much do i submit how much do i just let go how much do i say it's okay and what happens is you know i want to ask you a trick question how much do you think a person should submit 50% how much should 50 50 is it 50 50 thank you good one you know if it's 50 50 it's like um you know we're together okay and everything's fine and then we have a squabble and then i love i mean he loves me 50 i mean 10% less 10 less so i say ah he did 10 less so i also 10 less then again you know he says she's not submitting to me why should i love her more so he moves another 20 less and what are we left with we're left with 20 so many marriages are at the end of the spectrum both at extreme ends no one wants to come in and another thing that makes us not want to resolve conflict is that horrible thing called ego we need to face it ego actually stops us i mean all of us okay ego actually stops us from wanting to resolve something so uh, today we're going to really see how do we you know if we have to put it in practical steps and how do we actually handle it the first thing you know uh, i believe and th- it's in this uh, thing we need to learn to appreciate one another you know the in the bible i like uh, the way god handles it in revelation 2 and 3 there's so much of you know but you did not do this but you know every church god appreciates something you did this 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 but i have this against you have you noticed that in revelations 2 and 3 every time god starts with reprimanding us he starts with a positive he says all the good things he appreciates us 
even as a church, as the body of Christ, how much more we are in this, you know, someone said that it's a short journey. However long we live, it's a short journey. Why not enjoy the journey? Why not make an effort, intentional, that word, and just say, okay, let's just see what God wants. So some people say, oh, we don't, you know, there's nothing to appreciate. Uh, you know, the very fact that that person's made in the image of God, you're telling God, you know, you made junk. We need to understand everything in relationship to him. When we look at it, they say, no, I wouldn't say that to God. I love God so much. So then we, you know, we realize, hey, there is a lot to discover. There is a lot to appreciate. And, um, you know, we can appreciate the character, the behavior, their strengths, uh, their abilities, what they're good at. He loves digging into the word of God. I really appreciate that because uh, every time I've listened to his mar messages, you know, we've been married for 35 years. Every time I listen, it'll be a different message. Same topic, it'll be a different message. Every time. That's how much for him, sitting with God is a picnic every morning. And over these 35 years, I can tell you to the glory of God, I can count on my fingers, maybe one hand or maybe two hands, the number of times he's missed his time with God. So when we, uh, when we start looking at, you know, I'm, I'm accountable there, and so I, I respect here. I'm accountable there, so I value here. You know, I value him for who he is because of who God made him to be. When we start looking at it from that perspective, we'll start looking at a lot of things instead of just that one black dot. You know, the Bible says, esteem the other better than yourself. Why appreciate? Why appreciate? Why bother appreciating? We just married anyway. We're going to just go reach our destination. My question, why not make the, des the whole journey enjoyable? Why not making? Why, 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 why not just dump the ego and say, "Hey, let's focus on enjoying our journey, however long, however long." And uh, appreciating creates a secure atmosphere in marriage. Let's face it; that is the truth. Appreciating creates a secure atmosphere in our culture, in our Indian culture. It's uh, it's easier to appreciate someone outside. You know, you can appreciate everybody in the office because you're the boss. You have to say, wow, good job, great job, fantastic. And by the time you get into the car and especially as you turn into that road with your, you know, where, that street where you're going to go reach, the button switches off. <laughs> you know, that appreciation button goes off. And then everything is like, you know, why can't you do this? Why didn't you do this? See, why, yeah. Home, home. Go back. At home. You know, it's constantly that. So we, when we see families like that, I want, to, I want to really challenge you. Make the journey enjoyable. Only we get a chance together for only one lifetime. After that, I know COVID taught us so many lessons. We lost so many close friends. And we saw so many friends weep after that. So and all the more, you know, into our marriage, I look and I learn and I say, God, Help me to value him, to respect him till the very last breath that I have. That what he'll be left with is happy memories, joyful times. And um, yeah, one person came in one break time. Not here, huh? nice people you're all. <laughs> in another city, uh, very conservative crowd. Uh, so one person came, whole, that whole session of, you know, this whole bit about appreciation. He was sitting like this and looking at me. And he said, you know, you know when a person's not listening to you, they're saying, okay, finish, woman, have your way, finish, you got the mic. So he's sitting like that and watching me, one man. And in the break time, he came and said, you know what, all this is Western culture, okay? It won't work here. And he's got a beautiful wife who was so active for the Lord. And I just looked at him and smiled, and I went back to the room that it was a two-day session. With my husband, I said, in Jesus' name, I break everything where culture, Indian culture becomes more important than Bible culture. See, we need to decide which culture, which kingdom we belong to. We belong there. And so when you start living out of there, no, a lot of things are different. There it's a culture of love. God is a God who loves. In spite of us, he loves. So when we understand that, we say, okay, while I'm yet a sinner, whether I, you know, whether he loves or not, whether she submits or not, let me do my part as unto God because I love him. And when we get into that, you know, we find by God's grace, the next day, 
evening, that same gentleman came back to me. He didn't go to David, okay? He came to me only. So he came back to me and he said, um, it's good. Thank you. And he went, <laughs> so pass mark. <laughs> My point was, I know God moved, you know? So if there's something in your mind that's saying, no, why should I? Let's check if it's ego. Let's check if it's something that's not of God, which God himself would not be pleased with. So often in our house, I would sit and, you know, tell God, are you happy, Lord, with us? Are you comfortable just coming and sitting on the sofa and saying, wow, I love the way Dulcie and David are running the house. Are you happy with the way we treat our kids, Lord? Are you pleased with me? You know, even Moses said that, if you are pleased with me, if you are pleased with me, show me your way. So that is a constant in a believer's life. Now, in a man's heart, when a wife appreciates, it translates as respect. We may not tell our husbands time and time again, I respect you, I respect you. I mean, that doesn't work. I love you at least works. <laughs> not I respect you. But when I appreciate him, when I appreciate, I was just telling him, I said, you know, when we, that one issue we were talking about, no? So we're trying to figure out what one issue now we need to talk 15 minutes to talk about. I said, actually, you know, one issue was, you know, about your response when I started speaking before. But of late, the last few months, maybe a couple of years, I said, I find you just putting your phone down and looking into my eyes and listening to me. That makes a big difference. So my point is this. Uh, so he said, really? Hey, good for me. Like, you know, <laughs> that's what my husband said. So I said, yeah. So when I appreciate him, he feels respected. Okay? And that is the need of a, of a husband. Not a, I'm not talking about man-man. I'm talking about husband. And when a woman, in a woman's heart, when the husband appreciates her, it's translated as love. Okay? Let's turn to page 44 and do this exercise. So, this exercise is uh, writing down six things that you appreciate in your spouse. Now, uh, some of the examples. I've written some things, and uh, number one, <laughs> my wife, I call her the United Nations Peacekeeping Force. <laughs> Angriest person who comes into the room will go out smiling. You know, that's her strength. I, I love it. And she's brought up her children very well. Number two, there's so many of, okay. And she's a mentor, she's an overseer, worship leader, kingdom, uh, you know, all that. And uh, she loves people. She's a PR person. Um, she's got God priorities. She's aligned herself with my work, wherever I went, whichever company, whichever state, city. So, you know, think about your spouse. Write six things about your spouse. That's the exercise for the next seven minutes.
राइट आई एम हमने ऑफ यू रोड मोर देन सिक्स थैंक यू दैट्स द जॉय ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज आई जस्ट ब्रॉट माई ओल्ड बुक एंड आई डिस्कवर दैट यू नो देर आर सिक्स डिफरेंट थिंग्स आई रिटर्न देन राइट इन दैट पेज आई रिटर्न अनादर सिक्स सो कीप हिटिंग सिक्स और राइट so the second uh, second thing that we're going to see that's in page 45 um recognize the differences recognize that differences are good actually if both of us were of the same temperament same te- personality same everything actually life will be boring 
Thank you. <laughs> it's because we made complimentary, opposite, uh, you know, there's so much of surprise. And if you're able to uh, build, uh, you know, practice these, uh, these uh, things and, you know, if you're able to navigate through all this, it's, it's an adventure. It's a good adventure. It's a good adventure, right? So the basic thing is identify the differences and accept it. Because trying to change, God, that's how God made us, you know. There's no point trying to change. No point trying to change the way God made you or God made your spouse. That's how he made, made, made us. By changing it, we might actually, you know, thwart the plans of God. Thwart the plans of God. Right. Uh, so we, we have, you know, differences in temperament. I said, you know, temperaments, temperaments, we can be different, personality, uh, bringing up, schooling, uh, values. Uh, let me share just one, uh, one area of our differences. Now, uh, I come from a family, we have uh, six children. And, uh, you know, for us, birthday was like, you know, they'll buy a new dress and, you know, cut a cake. And uh, there'll be a prayer, then there'll be sweets, you go to school and come back, and that was it. But from my wife's side, birthdays were celebrated for a whole week. <laughs> you know, supposing your birthday was, uh, this is what happens, now at church also, no, birthdays on a Wednesday, on Sunday itself, uh, family will come, come and, you know, celebrate. And uh, 12 o'clock in the midnight, there'll be one, you know, call, or, you know, suddenly they'll come and sing a song, cut a cake. And those who forgotten next day, third day, next Sunday, you know. So for a whole week, there's a birthday celebration. So that is the culture in their house. So we've adapted to that. Actually, we enjoy that. And, you know, our children also carry on that. So in marriage, actually, you know, we need to identify what, are the, what is different, what is different. And what is not good, we need to wean away from that. You know, there are bad things that our culture, we've uh, carried over our parents, and we need to identify that. Differences, yes, identify the differences. Pick up the good ones, knock off the bad ones, but uh, don't try to change. Don't try to change. Uh, what we need to do is adapt. What we need to do is uh, <coughs> uh, accept. Accept that, identify the differences, and accept the differences. Now, one of the good things is, you know, to maintain a sense of humor. Like uh, Dulcie said, um, you know, I, I sleep early. So much so when we have friends, uh, you know, in Dubai particularly, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, we will be in a meeting. My eyes will be like, op you know, as if it's open. So few people who know me, they know I'm sleeping, you know. <laughs> Others will think I'm in the meeting. But uh, that's, that's it. And people say shutters are closing, you know. So that's maintain a sense of humor. Yes, that's my problem. But, you know, it becomes a, it's, it's a kind of a joke. You know, if you're able to accept our, uh, you know, incongruencies, our, you know, our own uh, idiosyncrasies, and, you know, if you're actually, if you're able to laugh about yourself, that's the best thing. That's the best thing that can happen. So in marriage, you know, you identify your differences. Don't try to, try, try to change it. Accept it. Adapt to it. And try to, you know, uh, not make a joke about it. Actually become a part of the joke, you know. Enjoy the humor. Enjoy the humor. All right. So <clears throat> we're going to, uh, this is a next exercise, page 46. This exercise is about identifying some of your differences, okay? So uh, N and S, that is Nikki and Sila, the creators of this course. There are issues that are mentioned here, okay? On the left-hand side, you have the issues. What you do is you look at the issue and give you, uh, yourself the initial, like, okay, um, I'm d both of us are D, so, you know, I'm D1 and she's D2. Right? So what we do is we clothes, casual, formal, actually uh, both are somewhere in between, you know, for meetings like this we are formal, but generally uh, she's a lot more casual and, is that right? <laughs> actually both of you have to write and then exchange notes and then you'll see who's right. But the point is, this is something that you can do in the next five minutes, uh, seven minutes, can you just Right, supposing uh, money, okay? The issue is money. And uh, I'm D1, okay? I like to save, I'll put D1 here. 
And if uh, Dulcie is the one who likes to spend, I'll put D2 here. But if uh, Dulcie is both, you know, she's somewhere in between, I'll, I'll put D2 here and D1 here. Both of us are, you know, neither, both, you know, we are spending and somewhere in between, we put it here. Right? So take seven minutes and uh, please put your initials. You do it for both of you. Right? And uh, after that, compare notes. This is to identify your differences. So this is a good exercise. What do we get out of this exercise? Uh, where we are identical, don't worry about that. But where we are, you know, diagonally opposite, I think, uh, and both of you agree on that, we need to accept. This is how he is. This is how she is. Punctuality, for instance, right? One person um, is very punctual. One person takes, you know, a long time. <laughs> Don't miss a flight because of that. But uh, the point is, we need to, um, you know, understand, give that space, give that, uh, you know, uh, grace. Uh, we need to have grace to give that space and move on life's journey. Right? So that is about identifying and accepting our differences. Turn with me to page number 47. Now, um, this one, it says, look for an us solution. I think that's the summary. You know, when we are having a fight, when you're having a conflict, when you, whatever you call it, you know, uh, we need to look for an us solution. That's the summary. And when to have a discussion or when to address this. Um, I said, you know, listening to that person, don't plan to listen, you know, plan that listening time at 8.30 in the morning, you know, that's not the best time. So also for arguments, there are, uh, you know, 10 o'clock rule it is called. 10 o'clock rule, 10 o'clock is basically time to shut down, right? Times for the lights to go off. So 10 o'clock rule is a time when, you know, you're not able to actually come to a conclusion. You're arguing, you're not able to come to, you know, a solution. Uh, one person says 10 o'clock, okay? What it means is, let's postpone this for another time, okay? Uh, there are good times to discuss, there are bad times to discuss. So we need to actually see that bad times to discuss can become disastrous, actually, you know? We need to actually be careful and uh, be able to identify, let's say, let's say, let's discuss this Saturday afternoon. You know, it's going to be a long time. It's going, I'm traveling, um, you know, something like that. So just identify, accept uh, uh, the difference, sorry. Uh, uh, identify a time that you can actually discuss to resolve the issue. Right. Now, practical steps. Number one, focus on the issue. Uh, actually, this is a skill. Because normally, when you have a, uh, when you have um, uh, contention, conflict, the first thing is to say, you did this, you did this, you did this, you know, um, and it'll go back and forth, you know, I didn't do it, see, do you remember, you know, you only forgot to, swear, you know, it'll go on. Now, we need to f find the way to take the issue out of you and me and say, okay, this is the issue, okay, this broke down, okay. What happened, we can discuss. But, you know, if we start looking at you did it, I did it, then, you know, we really, uh, it's difficult to resolve. Discuss the issue rather than attacking one another. So that's the other thing. Normally, when we, when there is a problem, when there is an issue, uh, the tendency is to, you know, attack. But gradually, as years go by, that uh, making the other one the scapegoat, <laughs> you know, that will go. That's actually a worldly principle. Who, who, who caused this? Who was the problem? You know, that's, that doesn't actually help in marriage. That doesn't actually help in resolving a conflict. We need to see how to handle it. If you have to resolve a conflict, we need to get out of, you know, who did it, what, you know, and come to, okay, this is the issue. Let's see how it happened. Let's see what we can do about it. Number two. Uh, this is something we say, you always, uh, uh, you are always late, you know. Um, you always, you never, okay. These are two statements, actually, we, uh, you know, it's part of our vocabulary. It's part of our vocabulary. And if anything goes wrong, we won't say this. We'll say you always do this, right? Am I right? 
Yeah, so we need to actually stop doing that. We need to actually be able to say, I feel like this when this happens. I feel undervalued. I feel, you know, um, I'm, uh, I feel very bad. Or, you know, how it affects me. We need to be able to say that rather than saying, you, you always, you never. Okay? That is the second thing. Um, <laughs> so many, I've written a few li lists. Now this, see, some of the things that we share is not always about us. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to share this list. <laughs> Listen to each other. Okay. Um, for every issue, both of you can have viewpoints about it. And uh, in our culture, the, the Eastern culture, not only here, we were in Korea and we found, you know, the man respects, you know, the, uh, the woman is not even there. And even if they are married, the father, the grandfather has the, you know, supreme authority. Yeah. So, uh, what did I say this? Ah, so, in our culture, it's the man who needs to be talking and the woman needs to be submitting. And in the church, we've been taught, saying, you know, <laughs> if <laughs> she has to submit all the time. It's not like that, actually. Submit to one another. Verse 21, five, chapter 5 says, submit to one another. And later on, it talks about wife submitting. So, take turns to talk. Take turns to talk, you know, uh, in the lesson on communication, we talked about, you know, listening. So, uh, hold the towel <laughs> or hold the bottle saying, it's my turn to talk, please listen to me, you know, especially when you're wrong, you know, especially when you fail. Uh, the, uh, the easiest thing is to, you know, say, yes, I did this, you know, and uh, resolve it. But uh, uh, there is an, uh, both the two sides to every issue. And I think we should be open to hear the other person's opinion about an issue. You know, bringing up kids, for instance, you know, uh, both ha might have a different view. Your bringing up has been different. You know, one might want to spank, spank, spank. Other one may not even want to spank. We might be wanting to, you know, talk the issue out. So between the parents, you will have a conflict. But uh, it will uh, be right and appropriate to actually say, okay, the boy has gone to sleep. Shall we talk about it? Then talk about it. You know, he did this, he did this. Yes, so what? Could we have given time? Could you have not hit him? Could you have talked to him? He was not listening to me. Well, okay, he could have asked me, I could have come, you know? So being able to talk about the issue, okay? And allow the other person to, uh, both people to share their opinion and listen to each other. Okay, that's number three. Brainstorming for possible solutions. You know, um, issues, issues on, you know, the child's future, you know, which college he needs to go. How many of you have teenage children here? Teenage, so many, yeah. So there will be, there's, this is a time, actually, teenage children, you know, their time is very different from our times. You know, the problems they go through are so different. So we need to actually, you know, there's no one solution for a particular problem. So we need to be able to talk through. Now, here it says brainstorm and then finally decide the best solution. I would add something to it because this is church and because Holy Spirit is a counselor. He's a helper. We need to talk and allow Holy Spirit to give us solutions. Especially those children, uh, parents having teenagers, uh, husband, wife. We need to actually talk and allow Holy Spirit to give us God solutions, you know, good solutions are there, but this is God solutions. All right, so we're not going to do this exercise. I want you to actually identify an issue, okay? <clears throat> and uh, page 48 and 49. Don't take a difficult issue, okay? Um, again, don't take it. <laughs> One is because we have limited time. But um, before that, in your schedule, you know your schedules, you know, you know, uh, uh, children having toddlers, that's, a, you know, um, our uh, son and daughter-in-law, they have a son uh, who's just six, seven months old and uh, daughter three, three and a half year, uh, years old. So uh, till they go to sleep, eight o'clock in the night, 
nothing is possible you know so th there's a time you know what what are the best times for us to discuss disagreements we need to identify that number one number two tell your partner which of the five steps that you think is most important for you oh i'm sorry we're not doing a discussion here this is for your um, your, your your date time you can do that you know follow these steps and when you have a conflict uh, follow these steps All right tell your partner which of the five steps you think is most important to you yeah going to start. yeah going to start. sorry All right third point is that I, i'm so sorry we are going to discuss an issue discuss uh, point 3 choose an issue which causes or could potentially cause a conflict between you and this is the one that's uh, you know average issue choose your issue choose another issue for, uh, that the wife has and uh, this is the time to discuss right take one issue at a time choose one of the issues brainstorm for possible solution solutions number 4 take the other one's issue all right so uh, please take this next uh, 20 minutes 20 minutes for this uh, you know applying these five steps and look for a a solution look for an a solution all right so now we have come to the last part last part of this uh, you know these four four practices the fourth one it's written as support your partner uh, we would like to divide this into two parts. Number one, growing together or building one another. And number two, praying together. Okay? Supporting your partner, supporting your spouse, we do it in these two ways. So we'll first look at building one another. You know, um, one of the, you know, they asked um, the person who was married 38 years and I was thinking they would come and ask us next. So uh, this was the answer that I, uh, you know, I, I had. You know. um, in marriage, the best part of a marriage was building one another. You know. God's put uh, me in a position to build my spouse. You know, it's actually a ministry that God has given us. No, but we don't think like that. When we think of ministry, we only think of somebody else outside, you know, church, worship, preaching, and all that. But uh, the first ministry for a couple God has given us is to be able to minister and build the other person. You remember you know, those six wa water jars? When did that become wine? It became wine when they drew out and served. That's when the miracle happens. You know, I often say marriage is a mystery and marriage is a miracle. And we talk of miracle. I quote this marriage uh, wedding at Cana. But the whole miracle, yes, water need to be poured. But water there will remain water till it is taken and served. We are here to serve one another. We are here to build one another. We are here to grow together. Amen? Amen? Can we look at our spouse? Now you don't have to stretch your hand. You're, you're closer. If you can do this, can we, can we do this? Can we say, I want to build you? I want to build you. We need to grow together. We need to grow together. Build each other. Build each other. Amen. 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 One of the things that happens when we try to build one another is we kind of set demands on the other. That's true. That's true. And uh, when uh, we expect a partner, a spouse, to actually meet all our needs, sometimes it doesn't work. Right? And uh, sometimes we actually put demands. You know, we see, say, uh, you have to do this for me. <laughs> you know, we demand. And uh, when the demand is not met, what happens? We become disappointed. Then the blame game starts. You know, this is called a downward spiral. Downward spiral. In trying to serve one another, in trying to, uh, you know, serving is good. But expectation, you know, the other side, 
we say we have to build one another, then the other person says, you have to do this for me. Right? And then when the demand becomes a demand, that's when, you know, that whole downward spiral happens. Disappointment. Actually, somebody said, you know, best marriage is not to expect anything from your spouse. <laughs> You'll never be disappointed. <laughs> you know? Uh, but that's true. That's, that's Christ. You know, selfless meaning, I'll do everything for you. I'm not expecting anything from you. Right? But that's a good way. If both are able to do that, then both are actually meeting one another's needs. Both are meeting one another's needs. Anyway, that's highly impractical. We constantly need our spouses to, you know, meet our needs. And that's why God has put us together. So let's see how we can build one another. Right? Let's see how we can build one another. Focus on meeting your partner's need rather than expecting them to meet yours. So that's what it is. You know, serving the other is not expecting anything for yourself, but meeting the other person's need. Right. Ask your partner how I can make your day better. Actually, there's a question I often asked. How can I make life easier for you on a daily basis? Okay. Uh, in terms of my husband, I would say, okay, how to make life easier? What can I do to make it simpler for him? Uh, because one thing somehow I stayed in my head was outside in the world, they get punctured anyway. So let the family be the safe place. Let our family, the, the time at home, feel a safe place where they can put their defenses down and just be them and then relax and rest through the whole thing. So this is a very key thing in terms of building one another. How can I make life easier for you? Or how can I make your day better? You know, this uh, chapter, chapter 4 of the book of Judges. Chapter 4 of the book of Judges, there's a man by name Heber. And... Uh, he is from the Kenai clan, and he was living closer to the enemy than to the capital. And uh, the Bible says they moved to the north, moved to the, uh, the place where they were pitching tents. And, uh, you know, in those days, it was customary for the men to work, right? Anybody has pitched tents? Pitching tents. But, you know, this, it, uh, I, you know, 412... 411 and 421. These are two verses. Judges 411, 421. Judges 411, they actually move not and they pitch tents. And when you are alone, what do you do? You have to do, no? You help see, you have to help each other. Here in India, you have servants, you have, you know, all that. And here in India, the man will come and sit and the woman will clean, you know, everything. But when the couple goes to the US, what happens? Both of them wash vessels. Both of them are cooking. Both of them are cleaning the toilets. What happened? Everything changed. Right? So these two, I believe, you know, so when they went there, I believe, uh, you know, one must have helped the other. One must have said, please hold the peg. Let me hammer. Actually, and <laughs> there's a friend of ours. Actually, if you go to the went to the house once, the man was holding the ladder and the woman was hammering the nails. <laughs> that was a nice picture. So I think here also, Jail was the wife's name. And I think, you know, both of them must have pitched the tents together. You know what happened? I always quote this example for building one another. A time came when, when the man was not in the house. It was only the woman that was in the house. Jail was in the house. And the enemy commander, Sisera, came that side. What did Jail do? Jail said, come, come, come and sleep. He asked for milk. He went and she went and asked she asked for water. She gave him milk and then put him to sleep and then got the tent peg and hammered into it into his head. Enemy Not the husband, no? the <laughs> enemy. <laughs> the One place he's seriously explaining in Tamil that too. So, you know, he full drama and he said, he banged it into the head. The whole crowd know, like, my gosh, she did that to her husband kind of a thing. <laughs> then I had to come and say, no, 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 he's not talking about the husband. He's talking about the enemy commander. And this woman did it so powerfully. Yeah. The point is, you know, it's a very skillful act. Yeah. Ten peg, hammering it on the ground itself is difficult. But that woman had the, you know, skill developed so well that she could hammer it. And it came out the other side, the Bible says. That is building one another. You know, your spouse probably, that's not the thing for her to do at all. 
but because of you know circumstances life's journey that's why i say you know life's journey is so adventurous marriage you know it's taking you through a path where both of you had to do that and she was willing to learn and it came in handy that's why you know we don't know our future but if we know how to build one another i tell you we'll do well you know dalsi uh, she she she's a guitarist and she loves training people in worship and uh, that was not her plan at all but in abu dhabi uh, would you like to tell that story i'll tell no, no, actually in abu dhabi i'll tell means you'll talk take a longer time <laughs> she'll tell it in 10 minutes i'll tell it in 2 minutes <laughs> Now God said he'll bring ministry home. So I said okay, in this country how what? And that's how the story unfolded. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was, you know, she uh, my friend, my colleague's uh, son, you know, he wanted a guitar, so she went along and they purchased a guitar while coming back my friend's wife said, "Dalsi, why don't you teach Vineet?" And um, she said, "Look, I've never done that." So they said, "No, no, why don't you start with them?" So he st- she started and uh, the next day the son said told them my uh, parents you know few days i have never seen such a good teacher next week he bought five people uh, th- four or five of his classmates friends you won't believe in the next two years she is trained over 200 people in abu dhabi in guitar <laughs> drums and the keyboard so much so the youngest the uh, the, uh, the sri lankan church had a drummer girl five years old and those pastors they said the summer came you know before we had problems for people leading worship and all now there's no problem we have enough and more instrumentalists you know that what did i say ah so building one another up you know we need that was a skill and she built it's not that i built did i build discovered it and he gave me the freedom to do what i did at home yeah yeah so Hallelujah. the point is Yeah thank you the point is actually building you know growing together see what your spouse's needs are you know when they cry saying come on meet my need you know what to do you can't you can't you can't meet your spouse's need because both of us are like bankrupt businessmen coming into marriage you know what will we do but you know we have god we can meet our spouse's needs when our needs are met that's what the growing together the whole thing about growing together is each one abiding in the vine you know we get the sap from the vine jesus abiding in him and us we are fruitful and then when we are fruitful individually we can actually minister to the other most marriages crumble here because they try to meet the spouse's needs by themselves and we will fail we'll fail but if we are able to actually look to god look to god for our security our significance he will actually make us secure you know a good marriage you know what a good marriage is a good marriage is where both individuals are secure in christ you know this picture that is there there's a picture here in page page 50 this describes a husband and wife with god at the center of the relationship i want us to actually stand i want us to stand and i want us to do a prophetic act i want us to lift our uh, extreme hand opposite hand yeah i want us to lift our opposite this hand right i want us to lift our hand and uh, this is our hand actually extending to god right we are actually lifting it up extending to god and with our other hand i want to i want you to just hold your spouse i want you to just hold your spouse now this is really the picture of building one another this is really the picture of us being secure our significance coming from god with the hand lifted up each one you know each one we are abiding the vine we are fruitful individually that's when we can actually build one another father in heaven with lifted hands we come to you we want to build one another lord that's why you placed us we make a commitment now to serve and minister to our spouse 
We are the only people here, Lord, in this position who can do that. And you have placed us in this position. We dedicate ourselves to serving our spouses. In Jesus' name. Amen.